Since its premiere in 2012, Chicago Fire has been a staple of NBC's primetime lineup. Not only has the show proved to be popular with fans, but it also spawned four related shows with interconnecting plot lines and characters. As with any other show, some episodes aren't as compelling as others. In today's video, let's look at the top 12 worst episodes of Chicago Fire. Number 12. Escape Route Season 9, Episode 8 deals with a bond that forms between Kelly Severide and a teenage boy who he rescued from a fire. While the coincidences involving Severide's past connections and the boy's struggles are a bit too convenient to be entirely believable, the story hit some strong emotional notes and overall worked well for his character. Sadly, Escape Route's second plot doesn't fare quite as well. It involved Captain Matt Casey's argument with a floating firefighter, filling in for Herman while he's on vacation. The drama surrounding the feud over romantic interest was a frustrating plot line that felt childish and out of place on the show. Number 11. Blow This Up Somehow Season 9, Episode 6 starts off on an extremely compelling note as the Firehouse 51 team is called in to help rescue trapped survivors from a structural collapse at a gas station. With the danger of an explosion, Gallo makes a split-second decision to conduct a risky rescue of a trapped woman, almost getting himself killed in the process. Unfortunately for the viewers, the opening is as interesting as things could get. The rest of the episode focuses on a couple that fakes seizures in order to lure paramedics in so they can swap out and steal their opioids. Everything surrounding the story relies far too heavily on blind coincidences and dumb luck, stretching the believability of the show too far. Number 10. Funny What Things Remind Us What makes Chicago Fire such an excellent show is its focus on impressive emergency situations and the wonderful teamwork between the members of Firehouse 51, something that Season 9, Episode 4 seemed to forget. It shifted the show's focus over to the relationship dramas of its leads, particularly Kelly Severide and Stella Kidd. The entire drama is really frustrating to watch, as the issues could be solved easily if the two would just talk to each other. Instead, viewers had to sit by as Severide does everything he can to avoid talking to Kidd because of a misunderstanding, while she does her best detective work to figure out why he's being so cold to her. Number 9. Then Nick Porter Happened Season 8, Episode 12 had two major plot lines, and neither of them landed well. One story focused on Nick Porter, the recently divorced friend of Mooch, who needed a room to rent. The story is played mostly for laughs, but instead of being humorous about darker themes, the arc almost felt like bland filler material. And the second story doesn't fare much better either. It involves Severide and Casey trying to figure out who keeps pulling the fire alarm at a local school, creating false alarms. The plot presents one red herring after another, trying to set up various students, before revealing the perpetrator to be a younger child who didn't want to attend school. Because the character isn't introduced previously, the resolution is deeply unsatisfying. Number 8. The Whole Point of Being Roommates Season 6, Episode 8 focuses on Gabby Dawson, who has a tendency to overstep her boundaries. This episode highlights this aspect of her character as it builds the relationship between Dawson and a teenage girl she had rescued in the previous episode. While the girl is in the hospital, Dawson asks her some questions and becomes suspicious when she's dodgy with her answers. This is when Dawson really steps over the line. She begins following the girl, Bria, offering her a ride home to try and find out where she lives. She discovers that Bria's dad is severely addicted to prescription painkillers. As she tries to help, Severide ends up calling 911, which starts an investigation into Bria's living situation, causing her to run away. Dawson's reckless disregard for rules and other people's feelings ends up putting the girl's safety at risk, making the episode uncomfortable to watch. Number 7. Forgive You Anything Season 3, Episode 17 is a strange episode of Chicago Fire. Barely anything important even happens in its entire 40-minute runtime. In fact, the episode would probably be forgotten entirely if it didn't feature a guest appearance from Stranger Things star Joe Keery as a teen who Mooch thought was his biological son. But this doesn't turn out to be the case. After spending the entire episode tracking him down, Mooch discovers that the teen's younger sister is really his biological child. The sister only makes a brief, non-speaking cameo, stretching out the pointless plot line as much as possible. Number 6. Keep You Safe Much like some of the other entries on this list, Season 10, Episode 17 suffers due to its focus on relationship drama fueled by miscommunication. Paramedic Violet Mikami is secretly dating paramedic field chief Evan Hawkins, but their relationship is put in jeopardy. The drama between the two felt really forced and tacky. Luckily, the episode's other storylines were much more interesting, following Kid's attempts to get a woman to turn on her abusive boyfriend after he kidnapped a man for money. Number 5. Don't Hang Up Season 9, Episode 13 focuses on a plot involving a call Kid receives from a woman who asks for her and tells her that she's being held against her will. Kid tries to determine who the caller is and her whereabouts. Eventually, the team is able to figure out the mystery. Don't Hang Up falls short due to many issues that lower its believability. The constant excuses not to get the police involved in keeping the firefighters handling a kidnapping just didn't work. It felt 
felt almost like an absurd comedy and not a show trying to deal with a heavy subject. Number 4. Double Red Season 9, Episode 9 opens with Chief Bowden rounding up several of the younger members of Firehouse 51. The episode mainly centers on Mooch's point of view, as he's the only older firefighter forced to attend the training. While this plotline is played mostly for laughs during the first half of the episode, it pivots to a more serious note when Chief Bowden and Mooch have a heart-to-heart -heart about Mooch feeling old and undervalued. This prompts the Chief to pull some strings and get Mooch certified, despite never passing the drills. It's a pretty disappointing ending to the storyline, seeing Mooch get away with not having to pass the test like everyone else because he's friends with the boss is not the heartwarming storyline the show wants it to be, but rather a sad example of favoritism at the workplace. Number 3. Smash Therapy Season 9 Episode 3 is another Mooch-focused episode, and once again, it deals with the veteran firefighter feeling inadequate at work following a near-death incident. While performing a rescue, Mooch seemingly forgets to lock the ladder, which throws Casey over the side. The whole station seems to blame Mooch for making a mistake. Initially, the story is quite promising. Mooch having to take responsibility for his mistakes was a great arc for him, until Herman discovers that the truck really did have a history of malfunctioning and its previous firehouse, which relieves Mooch of any accountability. Unfortunately, this also reverses all the character growth the Smash Therapy originally hinted at, making the episode ultimately feel pretty pointless. Number 2. Pilot It might seem a bit strange that the show's first episode has made it onto the list of worst episodes, especially considering the fact that season 1 is typically regarded as one of the show's better seasons. But while many TV series pilot episodes tend to be among their most expensive and well-produced episodes, Chicago Fire's premiere struggled with rushed pacing and flimsy character motivations that aren't really explained until later on. The episode opens with the members of Firehouse 51 responding to an emergency fire that has engulfed a house. The team's efforts to put it out are sadly unsuccessful when an explosion happens on the second floor, killing firefighter Andrew Darden and injuring Kelly Severide. Since Darden was close with both Casey and Severide, his death creates a rift between the two that makes up most of season 1's conflicts between the leads. Both blame each other for the decisions that led to Darden's death. While this should have been an emotional hit for viewers, they barely get to know the character before he's killed five minutes into the episode, making much of the conflicts feel frankly quite useless. The first season in general would have benefited greatly from waiting until the end of the episode to introduce Darden's tragic death to give the audience time to connect with the character before losing it. Number 1. The Missing Piece Season 10, Episode 15 is Chicago Fire's lowest rated episode on IMDb with a 7.6 out of 10. While it isn't too terrible, its borderline absurd mystery makes it easily one of the show's least believable stories. The episode opens with Severide and the rescue team being called to help extract a trapped firefighter, played by recurring character Wendy Seeger, from a collapsed structure. After some investigation, Severide and Seeger realize that the structure was weakened on purpose, setting off the episode's big puzzle and the most confusing one at that. The supervillain-style plot feels really out of place in the show, built more around trying to shock audiences with surprise twists than actually crafting a believable plot and narrative. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you agree with our list? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.